Is that a minute, bro? <laughs> 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 That is the worst thing you could have done, Andy! It <laughs> just got soaked. Three seconds. <laughs> like, oh my like, like, dog. <laughs> hey, well, thanks so much for joining. Oh. Sorry. Nah, you're good, bro. You're good. Back a freaking color wheel again. <laughs> oh, it's the color wheel of death. Yes, yeah, dude. Hi guys, I'm Andrea and hi guys, I'm Mildred. These are your weekly announcements. Tomorrow we have Jaja Jueves. Make sure to tune in to some of our favorite memes. Make sure you send it to a friend and have a good laugh. We also have our Netflix party later that night. Make sure to tune in. We'd love to see you guys there and we'd love to interact with you guys. Then we have Friday Night Live. We have a special guest coming up and you don't want to miss it. Yes, on Saturday we also have our weekly vlogs. This one's for all of you guys who have constantly been on TikTok and seeing all the DIYs. This one is for you. You do not want to miss out. It's going to be amazing. Also, we have our Sunday services. English is at 10 a.m. and Spanish is at 11.30 a.m. Whether it's in person or online, we'd love for you to join us. And make sure to join us as we worship in spirit and in truth. Yo 
Welcome to this week's online experience. My name is Alex and I want to say thank you so, so much for tuning in tonight. Whether you're watching on IGTV, on Facebook Live, or on YouTube, wherever it could be, on whatever platform, I simply just want to say thank you so, so much for tuning in this week. I believe that God has a word specifically for you that would encourage you and uplift you during these times. Hey, we started a sermon series a few weeks ago called Cancelled, How to Deal with the Annoying, and part one was brought to, to you you by our friend Andy. Andy brought a great word on week one of Cancelled. If you have not heard that message, I would encourage you to go on our IGTV or on YouTube and check it out. It will bless your life. I can assure you of that. And last week, we weren't able to do part two of Cancelled just for the reason that I felt God speak to me on the, on the issue of racism and to talk about unity. But this week, we're back on Cancelled. This is part two of the brand new sermon series that that we started a few weeks ago. And so, hey, how about we get straight into God's word and into what we're going to talk about today. Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 through 3 is what I want to read to you tonight. We're going to be talking about this prophet in the Old Testament named Jonah. And watch what the Bible says in Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. The Bible says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went to Joppa and found the ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Hey, how about we pray and then we get into tonight's message. Father, we love you so, so much. We, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for everything that you're doing in our life up until this moment, God. We thank you that up until now, God, you haven't left us. And that shows us that, God, you still have a plan and a purpose for our life. There are still greater things to come. You're taking us from glory to glory and from strength to, to, to strength. And so, God, we thank you for that. And so, God, today, as we're about to get into your word, Father, I pray that in the name of Jesus, that, God, your word, would become flesh right before our very eyes. That God, it would be relevant. That God, it would be relatable. And that God, we'd be able to apply it into our lives. God, we don't only want to be hearers of your word. God, we want to be doers of your word. So God, help us to be able to do that tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Hey, well, we started this brand new series called Cancelled. And really what this whole series is about is that if you could be honest, coming into 2020, no one would have ever thought that that this year would have looked the way that it did. No one would have ever thought that, you know, coming into this year that we were going to be going into a global pandemic. Nobody would have ever thought that racial issues would have been as big of a topic as they are now, you know, and as divided as our nation is now. No one would have ever seen this coming in 2020. This is really catching us all by surprise. And really, this is our new normal. We're in a new season and God is still with us and God is still for us. 
followers, but we're really in new times. And really, if you're a senior, if you could be honest, if you were in school and, and you just graduated, maybe you might be feeling like this word canceled has been the epitome of your senior year. I mean, you had everything that was planned for your year canceled. Maybe you had big plans coming into the into this year that you were looking forward to, that, that you were eagerly expecting, maybe a concert, maybe a movie, you know, whatever it could be that got canceled because of the certain issues that that, that we're living through right now. Maybe you, you might be looking into the, into, the, into the summer that we're in now and you're like, man, I had great summer plans. I was going to go to Disney World. I was going to go with, out with my friends and do this and do that. And because of the moments that we're in now, it feels like everything got canceled. Man, if we could be honest, even myself, I had so many plans for this year that I was so eagerly looking forward to and I was so expecting for that they were just altered and plans were, were just changed. I mean, come on, if you're part of our 412 family, I'm still recovering. I'm, I mean, I'm serious. I am asking the, like, the Lord to repair my heart because Camp Belong was canceled. I know I'm still sad. I, I, I am asking the Lord to come through in my life in Jesus' name. You know, so many plans that we were looking forward to were changed and altered and really this whole sermon series is about how you can react and how you, you can go forward when plans have been changed, when plans have been altered, when it feels like everything that you were looking forward to has been canceled. What do you do when life is annoying? Come on, let's be honest. When something get, get, gets canceled last minute, can we just be honest? We get annoyed. Like, come on, are you serious? I was looking forward to it. I bought tickets. I bought, you know, it's annoying to be able to get plans that we were looking forward to to hear them that they get canceled. And so how do you deal when life has changed courses? How do you deal with life that has now gonna, or, or is now gonna look different? What do you do when life is annoying? And really, I wanna talk to you tonight about somebody in the Bible who could relate with having his plans altered and having to go through an annoying process that he had to go through. And I wanna talk to you about Jonah because if there's anybody in the Bible who had his plans altered was Jonah. You see, we don't know what Jonah was doing before Jonah chapter one. We don't know if he had plans. We don't know if you know he was busy doing this or doing that. But what we do know is that Jonah chapter one, verse one tells us that God spoke to Jonah and told Jonah to go to a city that was filled with ruthless people, which pretty much it was filled with savages. It was filled with like uh, people who just have no filter. It was filled with murderers. It was filled with people who didn't want to be surrounded, especially by Hebrew people. And Jonah knew that he did not want to go to the city. He did not want to go and talk to, to these people. He did not want to go and preach to these people the way that God told them to go and to share his message and to go and talk about his grace and his mercy and, and his power. Jonah didn't want to go to the city. And we find out later on in the book of Jonah that Jonah didn't want to go because deep down on the inside of him, he believed that the people of Nineveh didn't deserve God's mercy. Isn't that crazy? Somebody that, that was called by God, somebody who was used by God, a prophet of the Lord, had God all twisted, had God thinking that he was only for some people. Can I tell you that the message of Jesus is for everybody? It's for, the, for those that feel like they're the farthest. It's for the cusser. It's for the liar. It's for the stealer. It's for the one that's addicted to pornography. It's for the one that has been in that relationship and in a bunch of relationships. It is for the sinner. The message of Jesus. Jesus, is, Jesus wants to have a relationship with everybody and anybody. It does not matter if you went to college and you got a master's and, and a doctor's or if you got no uh, experience or if you got no education. What matters to God is that you're his child and he wants to have relationship with you. And Jonah had, had it twisted. Jonah thought that the message of God was only for the people that he wanted to preach to. And the Bible says that God comes to Jonah and he tells Jonah, hey, go to this city. I know what you know about this city, but man, the sin of the city has gotten to me. Go and preach to them. And the Bible says that Jonah hears God's voice. 
Come on, somebody. He heard God's voice, but he ends up saying, nah. And he goes the opposite way. A prophet of the Lord, called by God, used by God, hears God's voice. When you're a prophet, your job is to hear God's voice and speak on behalf of God. He heard God's voice and decided to not speak on behalf of God. And he decided to run the opposite way, trying to run away from God, trying to flee God, trying to flee his presence is what the Bible tells us. He goes the opposite to a city named Tarshish. And I love this because Jonah heard God's voice. But can I tell you tonight, there is a difference between hearing God's voice and listening to God's voice. Because the Bible says that Jonah heard his voice, but he went the opposite way. So obviously we can see that he heard it, but he didn't listen to it. Because when you listen to God's voice, it's not just about hearing what God wants you to do. It's about hearing what he wants you to do and acting on it. Faith is dead without works. And we are called to love people. Now, you know, just through a text, we're called to actually love them. We're, we're called to actually pray for them. We're, we're called to actually do the work of Jesus. We're the hands and the feet of Jesus. We're called to work for the cause of the gospel. And I love this because Jonah heard his voice. So there wasn't a problem. There wasn't a problem with God's voice. It wasn't that God was not speaking. It, it wasn't that God didn't want to tell Jonah this. It wasn't that God was whispering to Jonah and Jonah didn't hear it by accident. No, Jonah heard it, but he chose to not listen to his voice. And, and, and I believe that that's so powerful because so many times when our plans get canceled, like Jonah's plans got canceled, when our plans get altered, like Jonah's plans got altered, when we feel that God is calling us to do something that we don't want to do, or when life is looking like something that we didn't even want it to look like, what really shows is how much we really trusted God in the first place. Because can I tell you this? When you listen to, to God, what you're really showing God is how much trust you have in Him. I mean, come on. If you're here and you can tell me that you just go to any random person on the street and you're like, hey, I need advice on this, and you listen to them, You'd be a liar. You're not gonna take advice from, from, from just anybody, right? If you're dealing with a relationship problem, you're, you're, you're not just gonna go to somebody who you see at HEB and be like, hey, I'm dealing with, with this with my girlfriend. Can you help me? They're gonna be like, uh, I don't even know you. Like, you're not gonna go and do that. You're gonna obviously ask for advice and you're gonna obviously listen to people who you admire, who you look up to, and who you trust. And so many times when our plans get altered, what it really shows God is that we never trusted him in the first place. We only trusted him when life was going our way, when plans were going our way, when God was doing what He, what we wanted him to do. God, I love you. I praise you. You're, you're the best ever. But when life changes, when life looks different, when your prom gets canceled, when school get, gets canceled, when summer gets, gets canceled, when MCU movies get canceled, when everything gets canceled, what do you do? Do you show with your life and with your attitude and with your actions that you trusted God or do you show that I never really trusted God in the first place unless he was working for me? Don't get it twisted. God does not work for us. We work for God. We don't call God on behalf of like, oh, do this and do that God is not a genie. That is not the position that God fills. God fills the, the position of our being our heavenly father. We work for him and God is so in love with us. He is so in love with us that he will call us to do a work in a world that, that is hurting, that is broken, that is in need of his grace and of his love. And the reality is, is that even though your plans might look different than all of that, will you still do it because you trust in him enough? Man, Jonah. Jonah shows that even though he was a prophet of God, called by God, used by God, it shows that deep down, he never trusted God in the first place. And, and I love this because Jonah goes the opposite way. He goes to a city named Joppa. He finds a ship going to this other city, going the opposite, going the complete opposite direction of where Nineveh was, where God told him to, to go. He gets on this ship to go to this other city named Tarshish. And the Bible says that as he's on this boat, he goes to, to the bottom of, of the boat and he falls asleep. And the Bible says 
you, you, you can read it right right after Jonah chapter 1 verse 3 you, you can read it that God allowed a storm to happen in the middle of the ocean to get Jonah to get redirected back to where God called him to go and I love this they're in the middle of a storm and the Bible says that every sailor, every person on the boat starts to freak out like, oh my God, we're going to die in the middle of the ocean. We're going to die in the storm. What are we going to do? Someone figure out what's going to happen. And, and the Bible says that a sailor goes to wake up Jonah and says, hey, you better wake up and pray to whatever God that you serve. Because we're looking for any God to help us. Any God that can help us, we'll take it. It does not matter if it's their God, your God, my God, it does not matter. We'll take whatever help we can get. And the Bible says that they end up finding out that the reason they're in the middle of this storm is because they came to find out that Jonah was disobeying the very voice of God and he was trying to hide from God. Look, can I, can I tell you tonight, young person, or whoever that you are, that you might be watching you can't hide from God you, you can it's not possible it is literally impossible for you to hide from God you can move to wherever in the world and God will find you you could hide under a rock you could go where there's no Wi-Fi and God will still find you can I tell you God is not a 21st century God he does not need Wi-Fi to find his children can I tell you there is nowhere that you can run that God won't find you there is nothing that you can do that will make God go the opposite way from where you are and I love this because Jonah, even while he was in sin, even while he was disobeying, even while he was in the middle of a storm, God found him. God found him. It does not matter what you've done. God loves you. It does not matter what, what you're going to do. The reality is not if you're going to sin. It's about when you're going to sin. You're going to make a mistake. I've made mistakes and I'm going to make so many more mistakes. But I love that even in our mistake, in the, middle of a, in the middle of our storm, in the middle of disobedience, when we want to flee God, when we want to hide from, from God, when we want to run away from God, the reality is that God runs all the more towards us because He's that passionate for us. Can I, can I encourage you with something? Jonah, being even in a storm that didn't stop God from getting to him, it does not matter what storm you're in tonight. Maybe it's a storm of financial insecurity. You just don't know where money's going to come from because of everything that's going on in the world. God can find you. Maybe you're going through a hard time because your parents' relationship is just broken and you, and you just have no hope. And they're always screaming and they're always fighting and you're just insecure and you're just afraid. God can find you. Whatever storm you, you might be in, whatever mistake that you made, it does not make God go the opposite way. It makes God run towards you all the more. And I love this because they end up finding out that Jonah is the reason why, why the storm is happening. And so Jonah decides to say, well, you know what? I'm not going to go to Nineveh. It does not matter. I'm not going to go to Nineveh. does not matter if we're in a storm. You know what, guys? Just throw me overboard in the water. Let, let, let me die. Just, I'm just going to die. Isn't that crazy? He was so obsessed with the idea that a certain group of people didn't, didn't really, or didn't have the right to receive the grace of God that he was willing to lose his own life. Just because out of the pride and the stubbornness that he had. Can I tell you tonight, don't let your stubbornness come in the way of what God wants to do in the world and through your life. The Bible says that they end up throwing Jonah over, right? And I love this because the Bible says that God sends a fish. He sends a fish to swallow Jonah. And this is what's crazy because if you study, this fish was not just in the ocean chilling. No, no, this fish, if you study, theologians believe that this fish was specifically handcrafted by God for this specific assignment to get Jonah from one place to the place that God called him to. Even while he was disobedient, God had a plan for him. Even when his plans changed, even when everything seemed canceled, even when he was going the opposite way, 
God still sent something that he created specifically for Jonah to get him back to the very place that God needed him to be at. I'm here to tell you, no mistake that you've made can keep you from the purpose that God has for you. Can, can I tell you, if you have been feeling d- discouraged because of a mistake that you've made, because of shame, because of this or because of that, or because of a mistake that you made, I need you to know that Jonah life shows us that even while he was in sin, even while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Even while you who made a mistake right before you watch this or are going to make a mistake after you watch this, God still died for you. He still has a plan for you and he's sending something specifically for you to get you back on track. You might have gone the, the wrong way, but the Bible says that God makes every crooked path straight and God sent Jonah in the belly of a fish to the very place that God needed him to be at. And I love this, because the, the, this fish, if, if you study, it would swim on the bottom of the ocean. And the Bible says that even in the belly of this fish, Jonah prayed, and guess what? God didn't turn his ear like, oh yeah, now you want me, right? Now, because you're at the bottom of the ocean, you're in, the, in, in this fish and you're fr- freaking out, now you wanna pray. He wasn't like, nah, nah, call me later. No, no, the Bible says that Jonah prayed and God responded. Can I tell you something? He responded because he was that obsessed with him. He had his eye on him. He had his ear on him. He was just waiting for Jonah to call on him. And when he called, God came to the rescue. I know you might be looking at this and and you might be feeling like, man, pastor, it's because everything got canceled. Alex, you don't understand. I had so many great plans. Hey, I do understand. I had so many great plans too. And and they all got canceled because of COVID-19 and because of everything that's been happening. But that doesn't make me stop believing that God doesn't have his eye on me. He's still protecting me. He's still guiding me. He still has a plan. The plan might be different but my God is still the same. It might look like there's gonna be a different outcome, but the God that started it is gonna be the same God who finishes it. With your head bowed and with your eyes closed, if you're seeing this and you might be feeling like, man, I've just been so dis- discouraged. Man, Alex, I've been so discouraged because man, this year it's just been getting bad. It's, it's just been getting worse after worse. Like it's just getting like, it's, it's, it's not looking like it's gonna get any better. I feel like we're just keep, we're gonna keep on going downhill. All my plans changed. All, all, all my dreams changed. Everything I had to look forward to in this year, it's, it's just changed. And I'm just discouraged, like how could God do this to me? Like I'm a senior, I was supposed to have a graduation. I was supposed to do this, I was supposed to do, do that, and now college, and like how? Maybe you've been looking at this and you're just so discouraged because of how different this year looks, but I wanna encourage you with something. The biggest blessing you'll ever have is looking back on this year and saying, wow, my story looks different than everybody else's. And even while it looks different, God was still faithful. God was still looking upon me. God was still having his ear crouched, waiting for for me to pray and waiting to respond on my behalf. Can I tell you this? So many times we're asking God to do this and we're asking God to, to, to do that. And when he doesn't do it, we're like, God, why didn't you do it? And he responds, because you never trusted me. My encouragement to you is that you wouldn't be like Jonah, that you would trust that when you hear God's voice, that you would listen and that, that you wouldn't run the opposite way, but that you would run forward towards what God has for you. And even if you're looking at this and you might be saying, well, I actually fit in Jonah's category. Jonah's story is my Joan, or, or, or is my story because I've just been running from God. I want to encourage you. There is nowhere that you can run from or that you can run to that God won't run right back towards you. There is nowhere that, that, that you can hide that God won't find you. God is obsessed with you. God loves you and he still has a plan for your life. And so with your head bowed and with your eyes closed, if you're saying, man, that's me. I've just felt so discouraged. But man, today I want to put my trust back in God. I want to trust him again, believing 
that he still has a plan for me, that, that my best days, they're not behind me, they're in front of me, that there is still greater things to come, that even though the, like, the year might, might have started pretty bad, it's going to end on a better note. If you say, man, that's me, I want to put my trust in Jesus again, I simply just want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, come into my life, for forgive me of my sins, wash me of my sins, surround me with your favor, cover me with your grace, and fill me with your spirit for now and forevermore. And so, Father, I pray for every person watching this right now. I pray that, Father, in the name of Jesus, if they felt discouraged because of the way that this year has looked for them, I pray that, God, that you would remind them that, God, you still have, have a plan for their life, that, God, you are faithful to, to, to begin, and you are faithful to, to continue, and you are faithful to end. God, remind them that, God, you are for them. You are not against them. And I pray that, God, you would fill them with courage and with boldness to be able to live like your children, that they would be the light of the world, that God, that they would be the salt of the earth, that God, that they would be the leader that, that our world is looking to now and is in need of now more than ever. Father, we love you and we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray that everyone said amen and amen. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning into our online experience this week. We truly pray that this blesses your life. Make sure that you're following us on all of our social media platforms so that you can stay updated with everything that is going on during the week. It is at ICM underscore 412 youth. We hope to see you next week. Goodbye.